James Polk was the 11th president of the United States from 1845 to 1849. He served one term. Not only did I keep my promise to serve one term, I fulfilled all four of my campaign promises. Show me how many presidents have managed to do that. Andrew Jackson was a close friend of and mentor to Polk. This relationship was a real boost to Polk as he climbed the political ladder. James, I always knew you had great potential. For the 1844 elections, Martin Van Buren thought he'd be the Democratic candidate, but it wasn't meant to be. Van Buren's opposition to the Texas annexation killed his political future. So the Democrats ended up supporting the Dark Horse candidate, James Polk. Dark Horse? Hardly. I was a former Speaker of the House and Governor of Tennessee. Who is James Polk? Let's be honest. You were twice defeated and out of office in Tennessee before getting nominated. You were only elected because you were Jackson's sidekick. In the 1844 elections, Polk beat Whig Party leader Henry Clay by a thin margin of 38,000 votes. As a Democrat and a Southerner, Polk strongly favored lowering the tariff rates. The Whig Party favored higher tariff rates to protect the Northern manufacturers. I wasn't so much against tariffs, but these levels were just crazy high. So I chose Secretary of the Treasury, Robert Walker, to begin drawing up a new tariff plan. In Congress, after a debate along largely sectional lines, with Southerners and Westerners favoring the new tariff bill and all but a few Northerners opposing it, Vice President George Dallas cast the tie-breaking vote in the Senate. By lowering the tariff rates, I not only achieved a key campaign promise, but tariff revenues actually grew. With his hard-won victory in the tariff debate, Polk next moved to revive the Independent Treasury Act that President Martin Van Buren tried to establish in 1840. The Independent Treasury was meant to replace the second bank of the United States. I proudly killed the National Bank as it only served the interests of the Northern elites. I signed the Independent Treasury into law in 1840, but the Whig majority in Congress repealed it the following year. Martin didn't need to worry. I had a plan to establish the independent treasury. The newly formed independent treasury entrusted the federal government with the exclusive management of government funds and required that payments be made in gold or silver or paper backed by gold or silver. Unlike others who lacked courage, Polk openly advocated for the annexation of Texas. There was no lack of courage from me. Unfortunately, I don't get enough credit for the Texas annexation. My position was that Texas annexation was originally part of the Louisiana Purchase, but was unjustly lost with the adams onis Treaty. Annexing Texas was highly divisive in Congress, and it dramatically increased sectional tensions. Southern states were highly supportive of adding another slave state to the Union, while the Northern states were generally opposed to adding new slave states. I was all in favor of annexing Texas. It would extend the power of slave-owning states and help the Oregon boundary dispute with Britain. In the end, the Lone Star State joined the Union in December 1845. In 1840, Polk was determined to resolve the Oregon territories with the British. Both countries had jointly occupied the region since 1818, and the risk of another war between the two was growing. Polk made Oregon a key issue in his election campaign. 54-40 or fight. Our claims to Oregon were clear. Once I got in office, I moved quickly to acquire the sole title to Oregon. We needed to determine the northern border with Great Britain and get access to the Pacific Ocean. Polk resolved the crisis by agreeing to a border along the 49th parallel, not the 54th parallel. But a war was averted. The Oregon Treaty was signed in June 1846, and it included present-day Oregon, Idaho, and Washington, as well as control of the Columbia River. After settling Oregon, Polk turned his attention to Mexico. Tensions were very high after America annexed Texas, a move that Mexico did not recognize. Polk moved troops into a disputed territory just north of the Rio Grande, and sent a special envoy, John Slidell, to Mexico. Mexico also owned California, which was of interest to both the U.S. and Britain. 
When the Mexicans even refused to meet with Slido to discuss a land purchase, I sent in American troops in January 1846 near the Rio Grande, the true Texas border. A Mexican cavalry attacked our troops on April 25, 1846 near Palo Alto and nearly a dozen of my men were killed. This meant war. The war was swift as the Americans had fought about every battle despite being outnumbered. The Mexican-American War was fought in Texas, New Mexico, California, and central, northern, and eastern Mexico, including Mexico City. The U.S. Army was immeasurably better equipped and with better trained generals. Our invasion of Mexico went in two directions, through Texas and over the Gulf of Mexico. My troops conquered Mexico City on September 14, 1847, ending the war with our neighbors in the south. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in February 1848. In return for $15 million, the U.S. received territories, including those that made up all or parts of present-day Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. Well, I achieved everything that I promised to do while doing it in one term. I managed to stretch America's lands from coast to coast. Many colleagues pressured me to run for a second term, but I said from the very beginning that I would not. It's what I promised during my campaign. It can usually be said that politicians make promises without any intention to keep them. Well, James Polk was different by sticking to his four key promises, as well as his promise to serve for only one term. Unfortunately, though, the westward expansion really opened up the debate about slavery in the new lands. This led to a further increase in sectional tensions, leading to the breakout of the Civil War about a decade later. 